your answers for the case of the hooded murderer and make sure we're kind of in the right place on that. So if you take a minute and open up your case of the hooded murderer, how many of you guys were able to come up with Virginia as the good? So at least one person got it. So the other thing that they asked you to do, they asked you to find out who the murderer was, and it was Virginia. But the second question they asked you was, um, is, is color blindness, did, did a murderer have color blindness? So, Going back and looking, she's not colored in, so we know that she doesn't have color blindness. But what I want to look at is I want to look at a sex link trait and how we can trace that back, just like we ended up um, tracing back the ears and, and the um, hair color. So let me get to the jam board, and we're going to go back here. Okay, so color blindness is a sex link trait. Does anybody remember what uh, a sex link trait meant? If I said it was sex linked, it means what? Yeah, it, it's by gender. So, do you guys remember the letters we use for um, the sex chromosomes? The ones that tell you if you're a boy or a girl? X and Y. X and Y. So, a girl is what? Yeah, which one's the girl? XX or XY? Girls are, girls are XX. Awesome. And boys are XY. Good. So, when we look at this... Um, um, so, when we look at this, we can tell um, whether they're a carrier or whether they have the disease. Um, so, what we're looking at is we're looking at um, the mother, Marion, the father, the son, Arthur, and then the murderer, Virginia. And that is this section of the table right here. So, I know that Virginia was not colorblind. Arthur was colorblind. Um, Marion, we don't know about. We don't even know the father's name. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find out the genotype based on the phenotypes that we see. So I know that Virginia had to be XX. Right? Do we know that? Or could she have been X? Could she have been this? Do we know which one she is? Not really. You can't tell. Is there one that we can tell? Right. Arthur. We can start with Arthur. And Arthur has to be an XY. And he is colorblind. So not only has, does he have to be XY, he has to be this. And we also know the father because the father isn't colorblind, he needs to be XY also. So he's going to be that. So does that help us figure out what mom is? Well, if, if this is the father, I know the mother has to be this. Right. So that makes this baby like this. And do I need another XO down here for the mom? I don't. If, if I had another XO, she would be colorblind. And I know she's not colorblind. So that makes this baby look like this. And then this baby look like this. So I know, so I know dad is this, and I know mom is going to be this. So what do we call it? What do we call mom? Mom doesn't have, isn't colorblind, um, but dad is colorblind. I'm sorry. <laughs> mom is not colorblind, so what do we call her because she has that recessive trait? Right, she's a carrier. So mom was a carrier, dad was not affected, son was colorblind. Do we know if Virginia is going to be a carrier or not? Yeah, we can't tell. She could be, she could be this top girl, or she could be this bottom girl. We're not really sure. 
she could be completely unaffected or she could be a carrier. Um, sorry. How would we be able to tell which one she is? What other information do we need to find out that she's this or this? We need to be able to look at her babies, right? Without looking at her babies, we can't tell. And that's what you ended up with with the earlobes over here, right? Arthur, Virginia, and Mark, we couldn't tell because we ended up with almost the exact same type of Punta Square where we did have dominant and recessive alleles and the baby could have had um, a recessive and a dominant or could have had two dominants and we just had to guess. If we had the next generation, it might be easier to tell. So what if we went back another generation, right? Mom here is a carrier. Can we tell about Lord Peter and Lady Violet? We could tell about Lord Peter. What do we know about Lord Peter? We know Lord Peters doesn't have it, so he he looks like this. He is X Y. And Mom, can we tell? Yeah, Mom, we don't have information on. She could be the same as Virginia was. She could be a carrier or a non-carrier. Um, but I know I know Violet's mother. We said that she was definitely a carrier. Right, so we know we know that and we're not sure about this. So if we put Peter's father or Peter in, Marion's dad, and then we put in Oh, that's mom. I'm sorry, I had it in the wrong place. Marion had to be this. So what do we know about um, Violet then? Because if this is this X, if we bring it down, we bring it down, I know that this one has to be this. So I can get that, right? And then that would go here. Make a boy. Make a boy. And then this would have to be this. Right? That's the only way to solve it with the color blindness coming across. So we know that he had no color blindness traits. She was a carrier also. And then Marion ended up being a carrier. So we can tell that Violet's mother was a carrier. So if we look at this, Violet could have had a baby who was a carrier. She could have had a baby who was a non-carrier. She could have had a colorblind son and then she could have had a non-colorblind son. So if we look at her children, all those things pop up, right? Here is a non-colorblind son, a colorblind son, a colorblind son. And then we know that she is definitely a carrier. Right? I know that she is definitely a carrier. And it's harder to tell if they're non-carriers because it just may be that they didn't pop up. So there's, there's some that we wouldn't be able to tell if they're carriers or non-carriers just because we need another generation. So does sex link make a little bit of sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. And do we have any questions about how this turned out? Everybody was able to come up with this? Or do we have issues that we want to talk about? No, that was easy. That was easy. Good. Okay. So we can go on to lesson, um, module seven, lesson five. This is going to be the last one we talk about in this. And this is about influencing this traits, right? How can we, well, how can we make it not random? How can we have some effect on what kind of offspring are being made? So, what they want you to do is they want you to take a look at this picture, and they want you to look at the differences, 
What kind of differences do you see in the dogs there? Size, shape, facial structure, um, fur type. Anything else? That's a bunch. Ear shape, nose shape. Fur. Colors. Colors. Did she miss any? Got a bunch of them. Floppy ears and pointy ears. Why do you think they're all those different? Dude, you've seen the Blue Buffalo commercial, right? All dogs mm -hmm. came from wolves. How do you get some of those dogs out of a wolf? Well, after a long time of breeding and getting smaller dogs, they 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 probably would have had to figure out which dogs which breeds from wolves would make smaller dogs and as they breeded it down the line it created smaller dogs some bigger dogs for hunting etc so we did that that was yeah. us that wasn't nature maybe it was both <laughs> okay so that's called selective breeding um, in selective breeding we choose the traits that we want we say okay i want a dog to be able to do this so I'm going to breed this one and this one and try to get the trait that I'm looking for. Um, we've done that to a lot of different things. Um, we, we do, we've done it in agriculture. We've done it in, you guys were saying, domesticated animals. Um, so we chose the traits that we wanted, and we picked the parents that we thought would give us the best chance of getting those traits. So what do you think maybe this big dog right here, the St. Bernard, what do you think they, um, what does this guy's bred for? Hunting. Hunting? So, yeah, it was like it's a like a rescue dog up in the mountains, right? They're in the Swiss Alps. Snake in the frog. Brennan and the Swiss It was like a snake, but just with the legs. Brennan and the Swiss Alps. It was just with the legs. It was disturbing to look at. A lot of times that type of breeding doesn't work, like as a natural breeding. Um, scientists would have to do something like that because they would have to. Um, there's enzymes on the sperm that when they hit the egg, the egg either lets them in or doesn't let them in. And if you don't have the right key, like you don't have the right enzyme, um, the sperm can't fertilize the egg. So that's why a lot of things like, if you're not a, of the same species, you can't have a baby with that other, that other thing. So, so what ends up happening is they, they looked at some of these and they decided the best thing for this dog would be, um, so this is a bloodhound. This one over here on the right hand side and some of the things that they gave this bloodhound is they gave him the big floppy ears the really big nose and the wrinkles on his face those all help him to catch scent right and the big floppy ears make his head wider the wrinkles help to keep the scent right up near his nose and the long nose gives him more receptors so since he's a bloodhound and he follows trails um, all those help him okay so there's an example um, back in the early days when we were settling the United States in 1650. Um, they brought across an English foxhound, and they found out an English foxhound wasn't exactly the best hunter. Um, it had some it had some things that weren't real helpful. So they also had a, a French hound, and they took the French hound and they mixed it with the English hound, and they ended up with an American foxhound. Those look really similar to me. What kind of differences do you notice in, in those two? The English one is more white. Yeah, the coloring is a little bit different. There's more white on it. Um, I think the American one is a little bigger. Yeah, the American one is, is a little bit taller. But the tail color is different, too. Why do they have the tail on up like that? Why do they have the white tip on their tail? How does that help them hunt? Uh, it helps them not maybe. get. It helps them not get shot. 
if there's a tail that the hunters can see, they don't shoot their dog. Right, as they're going through the weeds and the bushes and stuff like that. Hopefully the hunter sees that white so they don't shoot where the dog is. Yeah, but the head's different, right? This is a thicker, heavier head on the English foxhound. It has a, a thicker chest. And the American foxhound can get through the American brush better being a narrower dog. Um, they are. They change their genetics to, to fit the environment here versus fitting the environment in France or in um, England. So we're going to try, we're going to try that. Um, we're going to imagine you're an elk hunter and you live in an area known for grizzly bears. You want a dog that can hear a grizzly bear approaching and alarm the bear so it will turn back. Which traits do you think would be most appropriate? So of the four traits that pointed ears or floppy ears, green eyes or blue eyes, short coat or long coat, medium bark or loud bark? Breed three. You're going to pick breed three. Which trait though? <laughs> You're actually a, a step ahead of us. <laughs> What's the most important trait for that dog to have? A loud bark, so it would scare the bear. Okay, do you guys agree? A loud bark? The point is to alarm the bear so it'll go away, so the louder the bark, maybe it'll be like, oh, what was that? Okay, so if if um, the loud bark is the most important, what's the next most important? Yeah. The ears... Floppy ears or pointed ears? Yeah, the pointed ears helps them to hear better. So you think that the pointed ears are important, the loud bark is important. Um, is the long or short coat important? I mean, the, the short coat would be more important, actually, because if you need to move through things quicker, you're, you don't need your fur things stuck in things. You don't want your fur stuck in things, so you think a short coat is better? Yeah. And then what about eye color? Does eye color really matter? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> That's exactly the question. Okay, so kind of what you're looking at is you're looking at some things are real important, other things might be important, and some things aren't important. So which dog breed do you think is the best? After introduction, one. one. You're thinking one? Any, yeah. Anybody thinking in the, uh, the other class, first period, pick three. So is there a perfect dog, one, two, or three? Right. So there's definitely variation, right, within the dogs. You don't necessarily get clones, right? You don't get the exact same dog time after time after time. Um, they come out a little bit different. And like you said, some are louder, some are quieter, some are more athletic, less athletic, hear better, see better. Right, even within that one breed. So, what would you do to get a perfect dog? You'd have to have a purebred, purebred bath. Wow. You'd have to have a, a certain line, and you would have to control the breeding. Breeding. Breed, dear God, I can't speak. Okay, so you'd breed like number one and number three, and hopefully you get a dog with pointy ears and a loud bark. And, yeah. So that's, that's actually selective breeding. That's what they do. So we're going to have an activity of selective breeding. Um, and what you're going to try to do, your purpose on this one, is you're a dog breeder and you've been contacted by a scientist who wants dogs that can be used to see and retrieve waterfowl, like the ducks and geese, um, from lakes in the area so the birds can be tagged and re-released. The birds are very skittish, so they scare easily, and they must be retrieved unharmed with a minimal amount of stress. So I am thinking, I am thinking that the dogs don't have to actually hunt them down and catch them. Somehow the the ducks are incapacitated, right? They're they're not moving, and all the dog has to do is find them, pick them up, and bring them back to the scientist. That's their job. They don't actually have to like swim out in the water and grab a duck that's trying to fly away. So that's your purpose, and what you're going to do is you have a bunch of different traits and you're going to choose which traits you think are the best. So, if we go and we open up um, the 
the sheet for today is assignment puppies. So if I go to my modules, and we're getting ready to finish up module seven, and I go down to breed puppies, that'll give you this worksheet. In the first part of the worksheet, they want you to look at all these different things. They have smell and sight and hearing and speed and durn strength. Um, some of them are important, some are somewhat important, and some are not important. So what they want you to do is they want you to say, this is going to be my perfect dog. If, if I had a dog that was going to go pick up ducks, bring them back, and not harm them, I would have this dog. Um, so you're just going to come in and you're going to highlight see I want well, I know sight sight I think is going to be real important so I'm going to put sight I'm going to make that so take a minute and go down your list and um, choose what the desired form is going to be which one when you guys have all your traits picked let me know and I'll go on to the next section you're done did you kind of agree with some of the ones I picked or do you, do you have different stuff because this is an opinion. This is an opinion. This isn't. Oh, yeah. This isn't necessarily um, right or wrong. Yeah, I do actually. I share the bottom three. I I share uh, the sight, endurance, and 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 yeah. I, I share sight, endurance, the trainability, disposition, and bark. You have something different for hair length. Mm -hmm. I put any. Any. Some people put above average. So what they're thinking of is, I don't know, have you, have you seen that Portuguese water dog? Mm -hmm. They go into the lakes and they swim around and they have a thick fur. It, it's not necessarily really, really long, but it, it's just really thick and the water doesn't penetrate it. So they don't get as cold. Um, so I, I, can, I can see if you can get a fur like that, which would be helpful. You know, look at some of the dogs that are in lakes, uh, golden retrievers or Labrador retrievers or those kinds of things that can get in, in and out of cold water. So, I mean, people definitely put that. And some people, um, with the speed, they want above average. So um, when they go to get a duck, the duck isn't laying there for a really long time. So, like, like I said, this is an opinion. You don't have to have what I have. You have what you think is important. Okay, so down at the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to choose two dogs to breed and if you click this link it'll show you the, the choices that you have um, but I'll put it up on the screen for you guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose one of these two I'm gonna pick the two that are closest like if I breed them they're gonna give me the perfect dog the dog that's exactly like the traits that I just chose right you're probably not gonna find one that's exact you're gonna find one that's close and then say okay it's missing this so I'll breed this other dog so from this list I'm thinking sight I think sight is really important so I like D because it's above average and I like F because it's above average for that then I'm gonna go to my next important thing I think the next important is endurance I want a dog that can can swim so D has average, and F has below average. So F is not looking good because I think that's one of my top two traits that I want. Maybe I could go back over here and pick C because that's above average, and its sight is average. But you might have smell as, as needing to be above average. Um, because when they're going to get the duck, if, if they don't see them, like they're hidden in the weeds or uh, some brush or something, maybe they need to be able to smell them out. So pick the two that you think are going to be the best to get your dog, the one that you chose. And then on your worksheet, you're going to put them here. So one dog I'm going to breed is C. And then I pick the other one. And then I'm going to write down, I think... I pick those two because whatever reason you pick those two. And then you're going to put down your two traits that you think are mo most important from that list. Is the smell, sight, hearing, speed. 
trainability disposition. Disposition is, is how the dog acts. Right? Like a pit bull might have an aggressive. When you have your two parents picked and written down, let me know, and I will show you the next step how to make some puppies. So I'm going to make my first breed, whatever I put in the first one, I'm going to make that the female, and whatever I put in the second one is going to be my male. So breed C is my female, breed D or F is my male. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a trait, and I'm going to do smell, the first one. And if you look um, on Google and you just put in coin flip, it'll bring this up for you. And you flip it, and it's a It'll give you heads or tails. If you, if you have a quarter or something bite sitting around, you can do that. But if you don't, just hit flip. So my first flip was tails. And tails is my dad. Right? That's breed F. So, so F smell is above average for the first baby. So I come back in here and type in above average. And then I'm going to flip the coin again. So this one's going to be mom. And mom is above average. And then I'm going to flip the coin for the third time. And this will give you my third puppy. And it's head, so that's the mom's traits. So that one's going to be above average also. So all three of my puppies are going to have above average smell. And then I'll do the same thing for each one of these, right? Three different flips. First one is going to give you the, goes with the first puppy. Second flip is the second puppy. Third is the third puppy. Um, and that'll show you the three different puppies that you're going to get. Down at the bottom, all you have to do is write the conclusion. Um, this is a, these are discussion questions. Um, you don't have to answer these separately, but what you should do is read through these questions and answer them in your conclusion. Um, question two is not something you need. Okay, so you guys have the rest of the class to finish up.